Number three, Alki Zapia. Number 15, Yasmin Vicarla. Number 20, Ashley Sherry. Number 23, Dana Corella. Number 34, Katie McGrath. Over the top of the line, Ahadna Gabriel and Kristen Kelsen. The head coach for the Tigers of the Lions is Kristen Gabriel. This is QCC alum David Russell along with Joe Massey. Queensboro getting ready to take on NASA in the Region 15 quarterfinals. Queensboro coming off a 50 point win in the CUNY title game. And it looks, Joe, like they're peaking at the right time. Very exciting, David. Uh, they won that game going away. And now they play a NASA community team that they beat twice on the regular season. They beat them once here at home by about 14 points, then they went to Nassau Community and they pulled one out there, they, a game they were behind in. Starting five for Queensboro, Shantana Kanoi, Goshka Fidel, Whitney Hogan, Candija Carroll, and Giselle Prentice. Starting five for Nassau, Elise Zappia, Janine McFarlane, Cassie Cherry, Dana Sylvester, and Katie DeGraff as Nassau wins the opening tip. And Sylvester to Cherry, back to Sylvester, DeGraff outside, Zappia for three, it's no good. And Kanoi has it for Queensboro. Kanoi looking to run, Queensboro has numbers. Kanoi all the way to the basket, and it's two nothing, UCC. Well, one of the girls has been doing it all year for QCC, Kanoi getting the first points there. Kanoi named MVP of the CUNY tournament. In the title game against Bronx, she had 29 points, 18 rebounds, and eight assists. As Cherry misses that three-pointer, Kanoi looking to run again. Prentice, Prentice misses. Out of bounds, it stays with Queensboro. And Fidel will inbound to Prentice. Prentice back to Fidel. Pass to Hogan, not really looking at the basket. Gets it to Kanoi who puts up a three pointer and that's no good. Kanoi taking her first outside shot there, not able to get it, but uh, Kanoi and Prentice have been the two top scorers on this team all season long. Each girl had more points than Bronx at halftime of that title game as Katie DeGraff ties it at two. That's their big girl, McGrath, going inside. This is uh, basically small team, Nassau, uh, uh, in numbers. Yeah, in more yeah, ways than one, yeah. and they only have seven players. Yes. Seven tonight, kind of reminiscent of the BMCC team that won the CUNY title last year with seven girls. You can get a lot out of these girls if they do it the right way. There's a traveling as Kanoi uh, moved the uh, feet in an attempt to make that move. Good call, and as Veronica Sherman, the BMCC coach, used to say, you can only play five at a time anyway. And Christine. That's true. <laughs> And Christine Abrams, the coach of Nassau, likes to run. Try to make up for the height disadvantage in that way. Only problem in Manhattan this year is they didn't play any girls <laughs> on the court. That was a really small team. That's why they didn't have one. Count it on the foul. McFarlane gives Nassau their first lead of the game. McFarlane getting inside and getting a pretty pass from uh, Cherry, who uh, threw that ball right down there, made a good play. And I don't think Queensboro can count on Nassau missing a lot of shots. Bronx actually missed 78 the other night as McFarlane misses a free throw. And Kanoi has it taken away from behind by Cherry. And Hogan got a hand on it. Tapia gets it back. Back outside, Sylvester puts up a three. And that's long. 
and the rebound to Hogan. Sylvester, their leading scorer, she's an outside shooter. That would have given them a little bit of space, still a two-point game here. Kinoy directing traffic and takes another three-pointer, and that one is off. Rebounded underneath. Carroll puts it in off glass. And DJ Carroll ties the game at four. On my travels around the CUNY, I've been hearing a lot of nice things about Carroll as a ball player because of her height, and that's always nice. Carroll was the player of the game in the semifinal win as Nassau goes up 7-4. Zappia from downtown. First three-pointer of the night for either club. To finish the thought on Carroll, she had 24 points and 21 rebounds in the win over Hostos. She's a sophomore, so... Um, Question as to where she's going to be next year. Fidel answers back with a three of her own. 7 7. Nassau looking to take back the lead. Sylvester to Cherry. Queensboro extending that zone a little bit. Good well, pass. too far. DeGraff yeah. puts Good. it in off glass. 9 7 Nassau. Saw the opening and Zappia got it inside with a nice bounce pass. Hogan. And Hogan called for carrying. 16 19 to go first half, and uh, Nassau's come out and they're playing very well here at the home of the Tigers. So, should be an interesting ball game. Queensboro gave up 15 points in the first half to Bronx in the CUNY title game. I think Nassau should be able to pass that. Prentice takes it away, and Prentice is going to take the shot herself and put it in. It's 9 9. Prentice with their first points of the game. They got back, but Prentice, a hard girl to stop when she gets the momentum going, going to the basket. We've seen that so many times. And there's a turnover, the ball will go back to Queensboro. Prentice also in her second year out of Martin Van Buren High School. She will not be here next year, but they have certainly benefited from her presence here this year, haven't they? I think Carol will be back next year. She's a freshman. It's Kanoy and Prentice, the two seniors. And here's Kanoy. Nice pass to Hogan, and Hogan finishes. 11-9 Queensboro. You are right, Carol will be back next year. And all five starters have scored for QCC in the first four and a half minutes. And she'll have another year to hone her skills, so can become even a better player. And once again, they go downstairs, Nassau, to get the basket. Janine McFarland ties the game at 11. McFarland averaging a double-double this season. Christine Abrams was raving about her before the game. And there's a three-pointer from Kanoy. 14-11. Very entertaining game thus far, David. 14-11, five minutes in. <laughs> Cherry trying to answer back, couldn't, and Kanoy has it. And here's numbers for Queensboro. Kanoy going all the way to the basket, and it's good. 16-11. She is dangerous in the open court, as we've seen many times. Nassau trying to answer back. Sylvester going to the basket. Nice pass to DeGraff who finishes. Drew in Carroll and DeGraff was left alone. 16-13. And a 30 second timeout taken by David Chambers. What a pace to begin this regional playoff game. Terrific game to this point. Not a lot of stops being made on either side, but good basketball, good crisp basketball being played by these teams offensively. And the uh, regional players of the year and coach of the year were named earlier today. Yesterday, the region 15 player of the year was Regina Steele from Sullivan County, and the coach of the year was Dan Lang, also from Sullivan. Talking about players in this game, Santana Kanoy was all region first team, and Giselle Prentice got an honorable mention. And also, Wadelka Salmanzar and Elise Zapia, one on each team, were named to the sportsmanship team. Well, we spoke to the Nassau coach before, and I asked her who the best team she played this year, and of course it's Sullivan. 
And I said, how did you do against them? She said, they uh, took care of us pretty well. Sullivan took care of a lot of teams pretty well. Very good ball club there. And the winner of this game will probably face Sullivan. Sullivan, the one seed, Bronx, the eight seed. Well, if Queens gets there, they're hoping it's a really big shoe. Hogan wasn't expecting the pass, then gives it back to Kanoy. There's Prentice to Fidel. Hogan back outside to Fidel. Ten on the shot clock now. Kanoy being guarded by Sylvester. Kanoy another three. And it's good! Kanoy from downtown, 19-13. That ball had to make up its mind whether it was going to stay in the basket, and David had jumped in at the last moment. Kanoy with 10 points. It's 19-13, Queensboro. Nassau looking to answer back. It goes inside. Underneath, McFarlane is fouled. Got the ball down in a good place. McFarland, uh, one of the girls on this team with some size, and she will head for the line. First foul on Carroll. Carroll reached and got a piece of her. McFarland hits the first. You said the numbers for Nassau on the bench. It's a question of whether they can stay in this ball game with the amount of girls they have on this team. And they'll have to play smart basketball, of course. 19-15 after the made free throws. Six and a half minutes in. Comes even a little tougher at this time of year, David, because you played a whole season of basketball and you know, a little wear and tear. But they're in very good shape, this club. Long two by Prentice is no good. And that's a good point you bring up. Nassau season actually began on January 4th against Queensboro. They're a one semester sport. At least women's basketball is at Nassau. Zappia's three is off the mark and goes out of bounds. Ball to Queensboro. Abrams is also the volleyball coach at Nassau. Their first game was here against Queensboro. So you think about all the games they have to play in about a month and a half. It adds up, but they're in good condition. Uh, she's, she's into conditioning. Uh, from what she was talking about. She said she really has no problem with that. And uh, that's good. You know, these are young ladies. They can really uh, get in top shape, and they should be in top shape. Kanoi, nice fake, and Kanoi, nice pass. And the basket is good by Fidel, 21 15. Oh, Kanoi, who had a double-double in her last game with big numbers. In fact, I think a triple-double. Yeah, but two assists short of a triple-double yeah, in that game. Yeah, two assists short, yeah. Showing she can pass the ball, and everybody knew that. She shows us right there. Cherry. And Cherry is going to be called for traveling. Ball back to the Lady Tigers. Yeah, she was afraid she was going to get blocked from the blind side and took another step in apprehension about going to the basket, and it turned into a traveling. Queensboro looking to extend the lead. They're up 21-15. Eight minutes in as Sylvester is guarding Kanoi. There's Fidel. Prentice coming over and gets it now. Prentice gets past Cherry and puts it in off glass. Giselle Prentice makes it 23-15. She kind of went in there at a very hard pace. They thought she was bringing the ball out, and now a turnover going on the other end, and that's going to give Queensboro the ball back, so we'll get a timeout here. Full timeout taken, 23-15. By the way, talking about the all-region team this year, there are a few players on the second team that we saw, uh, Melsa Massam and Mecca Norfleet from Hostos, and also Ellerman. Remember her from Suffolk, all-region second team. And from Nassau, Dana Sylvester made it on the all-region second team. Getting back to the CUNY, David, it turned out that there really wasn't a team that could take on Queensboro this year. Uh, we saw Hostos here late in the year. They kind of stayed in the game to some extent, but you could see they didn't have the depth on that team. Uh, no Manhattan team, of course, as we said. The Hostos game we did here was a lot like the playoff game. Queensboro was up big, Hostos made it close, and then Queensboro pulled away. The one team that could have given Queensboro a game was LaGuardia, and LaGuardia blew a 15-point lead in the semifinal and lost to Bronx, and Bronx ended up losing by 50 to Queensboro. 
It's been tougher in the past for Queensboro. They had a little better path to the championship mm -hmm. this year. And uh, I try to compare this club to some former clubs. It's pretty hard to do because this club is a little different. This is a little more open court team. Kanoi, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they've had a player like her over the past five or six years. She's big and she moves and she handles the ball well. So those uh, Queensboro teams had uh, specific uh, players that did specific things right. well. It's, it's fun to watch this team. And with Carroll, as you said, only being a first-year player, this thing should continue into next year. Yeah, and Carroll won CUNY Rookie of the Year. Let's not forget David Chambers named CUNY Coach of the Year. Bring the Lady Tigers to a 7-1 and one regular season record. Yeah, I think he felt relieved to win that title because he felt it was something he had to do. Keep, keep the tradition alive here at Queensboro. Third Queensboro coach to win it, Eureka Jung and Joe Medina, the others. As Queensboro has 17 on the shot clock. Nice pass to Prentice and the jumper is good. 25-15. And that was not an easy jumper for Prentice. Fading she's a, away. She's a tough player. She's really tough. Here's Zappia going down low. McFarlane. Good defense by Carroll. Rebound by DeGraff. That shot is no good. And Gonzalez had the rebound. Kanoi running. Up ahead to Fidel, and Fidel puts it in off glass. 27-15, everything falling for Queensboro early on. No, uh, no drop off over the weekend after they scored 89 on Friday night. And they picked up their defensive intensity a little bit now. Nassau not getting the ball inside they were before and uh, uh, without uncontested shots as we saw right there. And there's a foul on DeGraff. As she was going for a rebound. Only the first team foul on Nassau. Over nine minutes in. Nobody was closing the door earlier in the game on each other. Right now, Queensboro shut down uh, Nassau on the defensive end, too. Kanoi going to the basket. Nice pass, but Gonzalez couldn't finish. Carroll the rebound and the putback. And Queensboro goes up by 14. Here's Sylvester, and Sylvester is called for traveling. Nassau out of sorts in the last few minutes. Yeah, and, and Coach Abrams is trying to let them know that, you know, that was not the time to try to make a, a little bit of a panic move. You know, you have the ball, you're down by the 29-15, uh, but you have time to work back in this first half. Queensboro on a 10-0 run. Make it 13-0. Fidel from downtown. Queensboro with 32 points in 10 minutes. Well, your time starts to run out if Queensboro continues to shoot the ball like that. 32-15, <laughs> halfway through the first. Kick out Cherry to Sylvester. To Zappia. Kanoi takes it away. Fast break chance for Queensboro. Kanoi going all the way, and she'll go to the line for two shots. Nice run by Queensboro here, and as usual, Kanoi, the igniter of this thing, uh, they don't have any answer for Kanoi right now, and it's really translated into a 17-point bulge, David. 9.40 to go. Queensboro really put that together in a hurry. And another timeout taken by Christine Abrams. By the way, I look at the regional matchups. This is a 4-5 game. Queensboro, the four seed. They'll take on the winner of the 1-8 Sullivan Bronx matchup. The two other semifinal games, number two Suffolk taking on number seven Duchess. Number three, Rockland taking on number six, Westchester. You have to get a Sullivan score in that Bronx game later. See how many points Sullivan might beat them by. If, if <laughs> oh, Queensboro man. beat them by 50, uh, that could be a 90-point game. <laughs> you never know. Bronx, uh, let's give them credit, though. You know, they really put their heart into it last year, and this year they came back. They just didn't have uh, enough to, to stay on the well, court the, with Queensboro. The progression of a team their first year, they won no games under Freddie DeJesus. And then the second year, they made the CUNY playoffs. Then this year, they actually won a CUNY playoff game. So they're building, but not quite at Queensboro's level yet as Kanoi is at the line. 33-15. Kanoi with the 11 points now. Kanoi 
makes both, 34-15. Queensboro's biggest lead, it's up to 19. Uh, the coach there is now Peter Cepeda, by the way. Mm -hmm. And Prentice with the steal. Is dribbling by Prentice. Pull up jumper is no good. Carroll tried to get the rebound, couldn't. Now Sylvester running. Sylvester had her shot blocked. Prentice almost had taken away by Zappia. Carroll's pass behind Kanoi, back to Carroll. And Carroll is fouled in the act of shooting. Boy, Queensboro's made it very tough on Nassau over the past five minutes. They're contesting every shot, getting up court, making Nassau a cover. And uh, this team is, uh, is in trouble right now, down by 19 points. I don't think they wanted to spend the first half like this. 35-15. It was actually 14-11, five minutes in. Yeah. And Queensboro kept scoring and Nassau hasn't. Queensboro really picked up their intensity. Carroll makes both, it's 36-15. She's a nice free throw shooter too. She's in nice form. See what Nassau comes up with here. They really need a bucket. They've been stuck on 15 for quite some time here. 21 point lead. Zappia, Cherry is straight on three, and that's long. There was and a push off yep. under there to yep. get that rebound. It'll be on McFarland. She just pushed the Queensboro girl out of the way to get to that. Nassau, four team foul. Two of them are on Sylvester. She was called on the one that sent Carroll to the line. 36-15. Right now, Nassau needs a Sylvester Stallone. They, <laughs> they need to rock their way back into this game. Carroll gets back her own miss and puts it in off glass. 38-15. Carroll going to work now, and uh, they have it going on all cylinders, don't they? 19-nothing run for the Lady Tigers. Zappia doing a lot of dribbling, and she should have done more because she's called for traveling. Nowhere to go with the ball. She got caught moving it out between the circles there and way out high, and she uh, really hesitant on where to go with that, and she took an extra step. Fidel back to Kanoi. Prentice takes a three-pointer, and that's no good. Rebounded by DeGraff. Almost lost it. Retains possession. Zappia. Bounce. Much like what we saw happen to Queensboro against Orange this year when we covered a game. Uh, they've been taken out of it, Nassau. Sylvester for three, and it's good. That ends a 19-0 run. It's 38-18. Oh, they really needed that. They need a few more, too. Prentice going inside, and the shot is no good. Kanoi. Gets it back for QCC. Fidel to Prentice. Prentice's jumper is good, it's 40-18. Prentice, such an instinctively good ball player, saw the middle cut off, so she went around the screen to the right, had an open jump shot, took it. Prentice with 10 points now to Graf. Outside, Cherry, corner three, air ball. Rebounded by Gonzalez. And another fast break chance for Queensboro. Kanoi puts it in. 42-18. Kanoi now with 14 points. DeGraff underneath answers back. It's 42-20. Well, the one-two punch of Queensboro going to work. When Kanoi drives to the basket, then Prentice makes her plays. Uh, it's a hard team to stop. And that time they got the two back now. So they're down by 22. 6-17 to work with in the first half. They really have to dig in defensively here. Fidel inside Gonzalez. Had it blocked by DeGraff. Zappia. Bounce pass Sylvester. It's a long two. And that's no good. Kanoi with the rebound. Another fast break opportunity. Nice pass to Fidel. Fidel couldn't finish. Carroll the rebound. Her shot is no good. 
Nassau ball. Cherry. And that's a blocking foul. It's gonna be called on Gonzalez. Blocking foul on Gonzalez. It's a tough call. She was kind of turned sideways and they called the foul on her. Guess that's why it was called. She was braced for a while waiting to take the contact. And I David, was going to know. say down here, David, how tough is that? I mean, you have Kanoi going to the basket, then you have a follow, then you have Carroll coming in there. I mean, that is hard to stop when they do that. Cherry with their first point of the game, it's 42-21. Nassau is a team shooting just under 60% from the free throw line. They haven't been there a lot of times, though, in this game. No, not tonight. As Carroll and Gonzalez go to the bench for Queensboro. Cherry makes both at 42-22. Yeah, this is a good time to give some ladies some playing time who don't normally get it in a key part of the game, because you're going to need everybody, if you do, have to face that Sullivan team in uh, the next week. You'll need everyone. They need you, David, in that <laughs> game. And Alex Millings is in for Nassau for the first time. It's Fidel to Kanoi. Prentice, three-pointer, is good! Prentice makes it 45-22. Prentice now with 13 points. No matter who they take out, they'll always leave somebody on the court like a Prentice or a Kanoi, and they're so dangerous. DeGraff going inside. And the shot is no good. Millings has it for Nassau, her shot. I think Kanoi got a hand on it. It'll stay with Nassau. 27 on the shot clock. They're down by 23. Every time they make a move, they fall behind further. And there's a foul called against Nassau on the inbounds play. It was a push off to get to the ball. No wonder DeGraff got so free. Millings called for her first foul. And a full timeout taken with 4.57 to go in the first half. It's 45-22 Queensboro. I think that's a timeout basically just to give them a little rest. The, you know, they look a little tired right now, Nassau. They've had to go up and down against Queensboro. They haven't had substitutes to go to as we talked about. And this first half has been awfully rough on them. And this is a team coming into this game having won four of its last five. And in their last two games, they beat Westchester, the sixth seed in the region right now, and Suffolk, the two seed. Yeah, they played a very good game against Suffolk, uh, according to the coach. But, you know, David, you come in tonight, the first thing you had to do was have a, a close first half. And for the most part, for the first nine minutes, they seem to be in this game trading baskets with Queensboro, but then it, it just got away over the next nine minutes. And usually, not that this is over, but usually the four or five game is the close one, and Queensboro up by 23. They usually are close ones, any four or five game. Mm -hmm. You go to the, down to the CUNY tournament and watch a four or five game. I think I did the other night. <laughs> I, You know, Lima beat Baruch. That was kind of an upset down there at Baruch the other day. How about York? No, they only, good. Michael they only beat John Jay by eight points. So uh, th that tournament's going to be interesting, too, coming down the stretch. Kanoi, jump shot is no good. The rebound, the putback is good by Hogan, 47-22. We haven't even seen Hogan tonight. No, four points for Hogan now. Sylvester, kick out, Millings, jumper. Off the glass, no good. DeGraff, the rebound, the putback is good, 47-24. Good left hand putback by the big girl. DeGraff with a very quiet 10 points. I think they wanted to give her some time, David. She's big, she has size, she's the only one, really. I guess McFarland has a little, too. Wave off the basket, traveling is called. <laughs> Crowd doesn't like it. They want everything they can get tonight. <laughs> you should in the playoffs. You should, you, especially if you're a fan, you know, and you're loyal to the Tigers. Sylvester inside to Graf. That shot is long, rebounded by McFarland. Shot was blocked by Hogan. Millings lost it out of bounds, and the ball goes to Queensboro. 
as Cherry getting ready to go back in for Nassau. Melling's back to the bench. 3.52 to go in the first half. You Lady know, Tigers lead 47-24. Sorry to almost cut you off there, David. I was watching the big girl go to the bench for Nassau, and I think that rest did her very well over that time out there to graph because she was able to get some blows over there, and she's come out looking a lot more aggressive. Brent dismisses, ends up in the hands of DeGraff. Now Zappia, long pass for Sylvester, a little too long as Sylvester had to go through her hands. If they're gonna have a chance in this game, they're gonna need something out of DeGraff, and uh, that was a good timeout. They're down by 23. They gotta do this thing one step at a time if they're gonna get back. Nassau wants to get back in. They can't have turnovers like that, though. No, that was a bad turnover. They actually made two good plays to get that ball. Kanoi. Nice pass underneath. And a foul is called. Hogan will go to the line for two shots. Kanoi again showing her passing ability off the drive, finding Hogan down there on the baseline. And then Hogan hesitated going in with the shot, and she got caught on the arm. That's the second foul on DeGraff. No, Christine Abrams can't afford a lot of foul trouble as Hogan makes the first. It's 48 24. No, because Christine might have to suit up if they get too many fouls. Hogan splits the free throws. Queensboro up by 24. Three minutes to play in the first half. Zappia, Kanoi guarding her. Bounce pass, Cherry for three. It rims out to graph the rebound, and she misses. And Hogan has it for Queensboro. Kanoi, long pass for Prentice. Prentice couldn't put it in. And then taken away by Kanoi. Although Kanoi may be called for a foul. She might have pushed in an attempt to keep that ball in her hands, and they're gonna call her for it. Only the first foul on Kanoi, only the fourth on Queensboro. 2.40 to go in the first half. They're not giving them the outside shot. They try to go inside and they get the foul there. And that'll be the second foul on Hogan. Andrew Graff will go to the line for two. DeGraff leading Nassau with 10 points. Look at Queensboro. Kanoi has 14. Prentice has 13. Fidel and Carroll have eight apiece. Hogan has five as DeGraff makes it 48-25. Well, they're hoping to get something going with DeGraff inside, get Queensboro maybe to sag a little bit in there, and then get some of their outside shooting going, which has not worked tonight. DeGraff makes both, it's 48-26. She has a dozen points. Two and a half minutes to go until halftime. Kanoi. Being guarded by Sylvester, playing off of her. Kanoi has to Prentice. Nice pass to Kanoi underneath. Up and under. Kanoi puts it in off glass. 50 26. Yeah, they hit the 50 mark in the first half. Wow. And still two minutes to play. <laughs> Cherry. Sylvester inside, McFarland underneath, no good. DeGraff the rebound, and DeGraff is fouled. No, there's no doubt they've gotten her more involved in the game again. And she's a, she's a good ball player, David, at her size. And she'll, they'll send her back to the line, try to cut this lead down to 22. I think during that 19-0 run by Queensboro, Nassau was abandoning the inside game a bit as the first free throw is short. Went away from DeGraff a bit in favor of some three-pointers. You hear that batting noise in front of us uh -huh. with the styrofoam uh, plastic hands. Hanton couldn't score. Tipped and last touch by Nassau. We want to thank everybody for distributing those before the game. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're only kidding, of course. It's great. Great atmosphere today at Queensboro. This is the last home game of the year. <laughs> you always have something to complain about. <laughs> Prentice grew up in air ball. 
He'll stay with Queensboro. Yes, yes, it will. Now the refs will talk about something. Now they'll go over and talk about something, too. <laughs> shot clock goes from 29 to 22. Always important to make sure that shot clock is correct. Kanoi for three. It's too long and rebounded by DeGraff. By DeGraff has really had to hang in there in this first half with being outnumbered. And there's a turnover. Fidel up to Kanoi. Sherry standing between her and the basket, and Kanoi misses. And then Kanoi called for a foul. And that'll be number two on Kanoi. That'll be an over the limit foul also. Nassau will come down and shoot down here. That was not a good foul, Dave. No. He, she should have just pulled off at that point, but. May have been a little frustrated about missing and then tried to take it back from Cherry. Now you give them a chance to put a couple of points up, feel a little better about themselves. And Cherry makes the first, 50-27. Cherry makes both, and Kanoi staying in with the two fouls, wondered if she would sit out the last 75 seconds so yeah, that, she wouldn't pick up a third. That's another reason why that wasn't a good foul right there. 105 to go. Kanoi being guarded by Sylvester. But One there minute. Aren't, aren't many things Queensboro hasn't done well in this first half. Hanton misses a shot after a nice pass from Kanoi. And they'll stay with Queensboro. It was last touched by DeGraff. They went after the ball, they were vying for it, and it did touch DeGraff. Those are always tough plays when it goes the other way. Kanoi, nice crossover, pass to Prentice. Prentice scores, it's 52-28. Prentice now with 15. And then a turnover from Nassau. Don't know who the pass was intended for. 10 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. See if Queensboro runs it down a bit. They lead by 24. And Kanoi <laughs> content to run a little clock here. Yeah, they're going to look for something very good. Prentice, a long jumper, is no good. Cherry and Prentice is called for yeah, a foul with 16 her. seconds left. Again, not a good foul there. No. no. No sense in giving that foul. And that's number two on Prentice. Although that one, she may have just lost her momentum. Not quite the blatant foul that Kanoi committed. Well, they've done a couple of things wrong, David. That's about it. But you don't want to leave the door open for any comeback here. Terry makes the first. It's 52-29. You know girls of this age, ladies of this age, things can turn around in a hurry in a ball game. Cherry makes both, it's 52-30. And Queensboro can hold for the final shot. 12 seconds, 10 seconds now, Kanoi with the ball. Kanoi wants to take it. Down to four seconds, she may have to hoist up a three. And it's long, Gonzalez the rebound, the putback, no good. But what a half for Queensboro, 52 points. And they lead Nassau by 22. 52 points, doing it in a variety of ways, doing it with a variety of players, and doing it with their all-star of all-stars, Kanoi leading the way. She, uh, she had another uh, terrific first half, minus a couple of mistakes, but all in all, I mean, she made up for those mistakes tenfold. <laughs> has the two fouls, has to be careful. So uh, we'll see what happens in the second half, but right now Queensboro looks like they have a lead. It's gonna be hard to take down. And Queensboro now 20 minutes away from the Region 15 semifinals. Second half about to begin. Queensboro leading 52-30. 20 minutes away from the Region 15 semifinals. And 
And uh, David, what happened in that first half was that Queensboro had leads, I'm gonna get my notes here, of 11 to 9, 14, 11, 16, 13, before they went on a tear to uh, make it 29, 15, 32, 15, 36, 15, <laughs> 38, 15, and a three point shot by Nassau finally broke the uh, slide. 38-18, then uh, it was uh, a two-point game from then on. So they really went on a big run in the first half. Yeah, 19-15, and then a 19-nothing run that made it 38-15. And Queensboro has the ball to begin the second half. And Prentice, her pass is picked off. Zappia going to the basket, couldn't score. And you have to convert those if you're Nassau and you want to get back in this game. Yeah, the problem for Nassau, they can't keep it a two-point difference anymore. Carroll puts it in off glass. It's 54-30. Carroll in double figures with scoring. Zappia holding her back. She may have to go to the bench. That's not good. Only yeah. two players on the Nassau bench. Yeah. You have seven players and you lose one. <laughs> so Zappia will go to the bench. To Stacia Thompson in for Nassau. Zappia looking for a trainer. So if they lose one more player, they have to play uh, their five players through the whole game. Inside, McFarlane almost lost it in the crowd, threw it off the side of the backboard, got it back. They're down to five on the shot clock. And there was a foul in the act of shooting. There's a bailout foul. Oh yeah. See if that's two or three shots. It's gonna be two. Mm -hmm. Second foul on, oh, excuse me, first foul on Fidel. Fidel came over and got the shooter at the very last moment. Yeah, Sylvester. 54-31. Sylvester splits the free throws, but a lane violation was called. That's going to give her another try. Queensboro in the lane too soon. That helps out because they have to make every one of their free throws they have to make good plays from here on in so Sylvester a second chance to hit the second free throw misses that one as well Kanoi with the ball for Queensboro Kanoi going all the way and then lost it on the way up and Thompson with it for Nassau now Cherry nice pass to DeGraff DeGraff puts it in off glass DeGraff with 14 points, it's 54-33. Their big score in the first half, they get her involved early on here. Everything has to be done early on if you're Nassau. Now they're back within 21. Kanoi being guarded by Sylvester. And Nassau not a lot of bodies, so they may not be able to put on a lot of presses like a team down by 21 would like to. Fidel to Hogan, and she was on the line. Good call. They're just going to have to play through their tiredness and really get to it defensively, and they forced a turnover right there. Nassau ball down by 21. Carry to Thompson. And Thompson is called for traveling. Cannot afford mistakes like that. Got caught in between what she wanted to do, either pass or dribble, and she did neither. <laughs> I remember my first year covering high school basketball. Roosevelt had five kids on the court through the whole high school basketball tournament, the men. And they did very well in that tournament. They got all the way to the semifinals. Well, I guess the coach didn't have to worry about who he was going to play. No. Carroll. Carroll puts it in. It's 56 33. Carroll with a dozen points. But I remember he had a kid named Sammy Mahia, and he went on and he played, I think, at DePaul, if you remember that name, Sammy Mahia. That shot goes over the backboard, Queensboro ball. 
So sometimes it's not the amount of players you have, it's the quality of players. <laughs> if, you, if you have uh, world beaters, uh, you could stay in the game. Kanoi, Sylvester Honor, Carroll inside. Carroll missed. Made a nice move to get around to Graf. Sylvester got behind the defense and couldn't score. And Carroll is pulled down by DeGraff, and that's going to be number three on the big girl for Nassau. Yeah, there's the problem you have. You know, you can't afford to make mistakes, and uh, the numbers start piling up against you. You know Queensboro likes to get that ball run right away, so, you know, you're in a catch-22 situation wherever you turn now. And the bigs for Nassau, McFarland and DeGraff, are going to have to stay out of foul trouble. She's got three fouls, DeGraff, and one more, and she's really in trouble. Mm -hmm. Prentice being guarded by Cherry. Prentice fired it to Carroll. Carroll couldn't finish. Well, they were looking to go down there in the vicinity of DeGraff. They know what's going on. It's a good idea. Sylvester got it to Cherry. Cherry to Thompson. Thompson going inside. Lost it on the way up, and there's a jump ball between Hogan and DeGraff. It'll stay with Nassau on the alternating possession. Actually, good job by DeGraff. She didn't go over her back. She's kept her aggressiveness. You know, David, that's the problem. You know, those fouls are going to cut down on your aggressiveness. DeGraff puts it in off glass. Nice inbounds play. Got it right to her. It's 56-35. I wouldn't be surprised to see Queensboro come down and go right back at her. You may not have to go that way, though. The, you know, Queensboro's done such a good job otherwise. They've been able to score on this team. Kanoi trying to make a move on Sylvester. Kanoi takes a three, and that's no good. Rebounded by DeGraff. No white jerseys around, and Sylvester gets behind the defense. Sylvester misses. And Nassau has the offensive rebound after a few Lady Tigers were just standing and looking at the ball. Carroll with the rebound. And Kanoi, long pass to Fidel who stays in bounds. Just able to. No reason to make risky passes like that now. Hogan, shot is no good and rebounded by Thompson. That last play made Kanoi grin a little bit, but they got to get the flow back here. Nassau got on the foul. a little, yeah. And it's 56-37. The lead is under 20. Can't have that, David. <laughs> that was Cherry getting inside. And that's the third foul on Kanoi. Actually, that was McFarland who's going to go to the line and... They didn't put the two up on the board yet because it's still 21, the lead on the board. Well, good time out here as Queensboro looks to regroup at this point. About four minutes in of the second half, they've had their lead cut a little bit. Uh, playing a little bit lackadaisical and they have to get back to some of the things they were doing earlier. Four points in the first four and a half minutes of the second for Queensboro. So the scoreboard still says 56-35 as of this timeout. Right now David Chambers going over uh, some uh, some floor plans with his team as to what they were doing at the uh, mid portion of that first half that they're not doing now right now that's allowed that lead to be trimmed down a little bit i don't think they counted did they count that basket down there oh, now man. they're going over and i think they're trying to get they're just not putting that two up on the board well, so. they didn't yet unless they said it was before the shot this is a one and one, I believe. It's a one and one here. Well, that was. And McFarland. Well, I think missed. that was to finish the three point play, because it wouldn't be a one and one if that was the second foul on Queensboro. 
So I think it is supposed to be 56-37. Yeah, I don't know. Scoreboard still says 56-35. Carroll outside, Prentice. Yeah, they were motioning for one shot. That's what they were. Five on the shot clock. Prentice has to hoist it. And that's an air ball. Hogan saves it in. Carroll, but there's a 30 second violation. Surprised nobody on Nassau has complained that it should be 56 37. Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. <laughs> in any event, uh, Nassau's come out looking a little sharper here uh, with a little over five minutes gone by. Now the ref going over to the scorer's table. See if the scoreboard is going to read 37. I think the Nassau scorekeeper having a word with the Queensboro scorekeeper. And now we can play the uh, Jeopardy music. <laughs> there it goes, Dave. Finally lit it up down there. Wow, 56-37. Finally caught it. They, they can't hear us from up here, can they? Can't hear us up here. By the way, that official looks a little like Scatman Crothers, the old actor. <laughs> All right, Joe. In the old days. <laughs> it appeared on Charlie's Angels back then. And there's a foul on Hogan. That'll be number three on Hogan, about Hogan's hero, speaking of old shows. I don't want to make you feel uh, That's alone. That's quite no. all right. Okay. You know, Hogan making herself available, but uh, not in the right spot that time, and getting inside was McFarlane. It's, they continue to go at it, Nassau. you got to give them credit. They have not thrown in. They have not thrown it in yet, so to speak. 56-38. Still 14.34 to go. McFarland makes both, it's 56.39. McFarland with 10 points. Wonder when Queensboro tries to slow it down a bit. It'll be interesting, Queensboro with just four points in the first five and a half minutes. They have slowed themselves down and they've taken themselves out of their pace a little bit. Fidel to the basket, it's no good. And rebounded by Zappia. NASA on a 6 0 run. Nice pass inside. McFarlane. That's no good. DeGraff trying to save it and does to Zappia. And Prentice got a hand on it. It'll stay with NASA. By the way, there's another official, David, that I've seen time and time again on my runs, even in Division II. There's a miss inside, close to the basket. DeGraff had a pretty good look. Prentice, tough jumper is no good. Gonzalez has it, and Gonzalez can't put it in, so Queensboro has gone cold. Anyway, this official, I was looking at him, looking at him, and I, and I said, I went up to him, and here comes Queensboro, another opportunity. Almanzar can't get in the scoring column, but knocks it out. Carroll along, too, it's an air ball. It's not really her game. Anyway, the referee. I said, uh, anybody ever tell you you look like Marv Albert? And he said, yeah. <laughs> and I were said, you the last I guy to I just wanted to morning? be another one to tell <laughs> you then. He does look like Marv Albert. And I'm sure he appreciates it every time you mention it. Underneath, McFarland puts it in. That's eight points in a row for Nassau. Oh, his, his real response should have been, yes! <laughs> <laughs> 56 41, 13 minutes to go. NASA eight points in a row. Carroll lost it and it's taken away. Cherry. Cherry throws up a tough shot and it's oh. good. A rolling shot by Cherry there, but uh, hey, look at this, David. The lead is now diminished to 13. 10 points in a row for NASA and just four points in the first seven minutes plus for the Lady Tigers. And the Lady Tigers are not doing what they had been doing earlier, and they've opened the gate a little bit. Let's see if they're able to stabilize themselves. And you kind of expected that they wouldn't be able to hit all the shots they were hitting in the first half, but they have really gone cold. You know, 
it's a funny thing, as we said, on this level with these young ladies who, you know, they're only two-year players. Uh, sometimes the margin of error is very small. You know, you haven't learned enough yet that maybe a 20-point lead can't vanish at some point. And uh, right now they're talking about it, what they need to do to hike that lead a little bit here. Remember the CUNY playoff game here two years ago where BMCC came back against Queensboro from 17 down in the second. Comebacks can happen. And a 23-point lead has been whittled down to 13. And uh, still 12.47 to play. I told you it had been a two-point game for the close of that first half. And Nassau built on that a little bit. And they took it from just being a two-point game to making it a game in their favor. So... Mm -hmm. I don't know if they were going to be able to do that. And it seemed like they started doing that, too, when their guard got a little shaken up. So, uh, you know, sometimes uh, things happen in funny ways. Let's, let's see what Queensboro does now. They have all their good players on the court, and they really need, with 12.47 to go, to do something in a positive fashion right here. It's Fidel, Kanoi, Carol, Gonzalez, and Prentice, the five Lady Tigers on the court. See who they go to in this situation. And there's a foul against Queensborough. Yeah, Carol was moving. She wasn't really involved in setting a pick. She was just trying to set up. And she pushed off or just got involved in stepping in front of the young lady and got called for the uh, moving violation. Second foul on Carroll. And that pass was tipped and taken away. Kanoi. Kanoi, nice behind the back dribbling. Dump off pass to Prentice. Prentice couldn't score though and it's rebounded by DeGraff. Good job by DeGraff getting that rebound, playing with the foul trouble. And that pass somehow found its way to Sylvester. Dangerous pass by Zappia, but it found its target. And here's Zappia with it again. Back from her injury. And McFarlane lost it with exactly 12 minutes to play. That pass was too low for her to take in at her sneakers. She is one of the girls who has a little more size. And that pass, David, you want to get that pass high because she can't bend down to grab that right away. Bad vicinity on that pass. Kanoi. QCC trying to snap a 10 nothing run. Kanoi. Contested jumper is no good and rebounded by McFarland. Queensboro with four points in the first eight minutes and 20 seconds. Zappia for three. It's good. Uh -oh. And the lead is down to 10. Uh oh. Katie barred the door right now. About 13 points in a row for Nassau. And still 11 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Carroll outside Fidel to Gonzalez. Gonzalez to the basket, the shot is no good. Carroll the rebound. Count it on the foul. What a big basket for Carroll. The young player coming through positioned herself down on the baseline. And picked it off, put it back up, and drew the foul, and that is number four on DeGraff, and that is a hurting foul right there. 58-46, as DeGraff is staying in. 11.08 to go, Carroll finishes a three-point play. Carroll with 15 points now. Boy, that play hurt twice. The basket and the foul on the big girl for Nassau, so now they'll have to be very careful with her. Here's DeGraff missing. McFarland the rebound and McFarland is fouled. McFarland on the other side helping out. And they have gone to work in tandem at times down on that baseline. And that time McFarland had enough sense to get there and help out. Second foul on Gonzalez. McFarland's first free throw is good, 59-47. Nassau beating the Lady Tigers to the spots inside and making some big plays now. McFarland splits the free throws and Gonzalez has it for Queensboro. Let's see if they attack DeGraff and try to get her out of the game. Kanoi to the basket and Kanoi finishes 61-47. Yeah, David, you have to attack that basket with the big girl in 
real foul trouble now. Four on the graph, one more and she's done. Zappia, bounce past Sylvester. Gonzalez got the hand in and then fell out of bounds. Yeah, she wanted to get that ball down to DeGraff, but she telegraphed that pass pretty much and gave Gonzalez a chance to step in there. She knew where she was going. She almost picked the ball right out of her hands on the pass. And They're DeGraff gonna give DeGraff the a rest, now. yes. Mark that 10.27 to go. Queensboro up by 14. When DeGraff goes to the bench, as the refs have a word. And they bring in uh, Martina Thompson. Or Nestina Thompson. Uh, Stacia. Stacia Thompson. And let's see if she can do a job inside, at least to hold out until they can get DeGraff back in there. They're going to miss her. This might be about the shot clock because it's at 14, unless they decide Gonzalez had possession when she fell out and Nassau could get a new 30. No changes. Nassau ball 14 on the shot clock. Either that or they were asking what the Sullivan score was. <laughs> Offensive rebound after Cherry misses yeah. a three. You Thompson. like that one? Dude? Yes. Right. And another foul against Queensboro. <laughs> They're racking up. I always try to make you laugh, you know. <laughs> There's a foul right again. Uh, good job. Good work being done by Nassau inside in the interior getting to those inbound uh, rebounds. And that's another one on Gonzalez, number three on her as McFarland hits the first at 61-48. See, this goes both ways now. You can create some foul difficulties for Queensboro too, if you keep doing that. Hey, Nassau's gonna be shooting the rest of the way as McFarland hits both at 61-49. And McFarland has 15 points. Kanoi being guarded by Sylvester. Carroll coming to help. Kanoi's jumper is no good. And McFarland has it for Nassau. Carroll trying to get in there, got that rebound, only could get a hand on it, and then gobbled up by Nassau, and right now they try to knock the lead to 10. And they turn the ball over. A three second violation against Nassau. I believe it is, as Hogan goes back in. Hogan, Kanoi, and Gonzalez all with three fouls for Queensboro. 9.47 to go, and uh, Nassau has worked their way right back to the edge of getting into the small game. Let's see what Queensboro sizes them up with here. Kanoi for three, it's no good. Then she gets her own rebound, goes inside and puts it in off glass. 20 oh. points for Kanoi now. And a big play right there, David. Timeout, Christine Abrams. Queensboro leads 63-49, 9.24 to go. They say always follow your shot. Kanoi went after the ball after she missed. Sometimes you have a tendency to turn away, get a little disgusted, but if you stay in the play, good things can happen, and it happened that time. All right, it's a 14-point game now, and DeGraff is on the bench for Nassau, so uh, let's see where they go for offense here. We do have a game here, a 23-point game was cut to 10, still at 14. Nassau, not a lot of time left, though. Still well, 14 with under 10 minutes to play. This is the, uh, this is the era of three-point shooting, so uh, once that took place, uh, no lead is safe, to be honest with you. So a 14-point game when you were growing up was over. Well, you could look at some of the great comebacks in modern time and you wonder if they would be able to be done without the three-point mm -hmm. shot. If Pete Maravich played with the three-point shot, I <laughs> think he would have scored 102 points in a game. <laughs> in college, anyway. That famous Knicks Bucks comeback in 72 is done without the three-pointer. Nick scored 19 in a row to end it. Oh, they scored some nice two-pointers, though. Sure did. Nassau ball, down by 14, Cherry to the basket. Bounce pass McFarland, lost the handle on it, loose ball. And the three-second violation is called against Nassau. Queensboro ball at 9.13 to play. By the way, I have to check and see if Pistol did play at the end of his career with the three-point shot in college. That Not in questionable. College. No, he didn't, no. 
Did play in the NBA with it, though. I think uh, his last year was the first year the NBA had it. Kanoi, great move off glass. The lead is back up to 16. Kanoi with 22 points, and Sylvester trying to save it in. She cannot. Oh. Tough turnover for Nassau. They've worked back so hard, and they did not want to do that. And now if you're Queensboro, you know, you took yourself out of your flow before, but you do want to use some clock here. You don't want to just put up a shot right away. And Nassau really on the ropes here. Kanoi to Prentice. Prentice, nice bounce pass to Carroll. What a great play, 67-49. There's why you don't want to put up a shot right away, David. You work and the defense has a lot of pressure on him in that situation. Zappia misses a three, tip Kanoi with the ball. Prentice behind the defense. Yeah, Kanoi couldn't really grab that rebound and she would have had it up court. Carroll the offensive rebound, the putback is no good. DeGraff is gonna get back in shortly. They're really going to work without her in there. Sylvester, nice move to get off the shot and had a good look but couldn't score. And Kanoi picks it up. Kanoi, nice pass to Prentice. Prentice couldn't score. And then misses again. And then Prentice gets it back again. Hold it out a little, hold it out a little. Hogan to Fidel, and that'll be a tie up. Ball will stay with Queensboro. 7.37 to go, 21 on the shot clock. You know, it's smart, David, when you get that ball back in that circumstance, just get the ball back outside and set it up again because you got NASA running all over the court now. And now DeGraff is back in with 7.37 to go. She sat out for two minutes and 50 seconds. The lead went from 14 to 18 and now it's 20 as Hogan makes it 69-49. Well, you have to feel Queensboro has resurrected themselves here and or restructured things and they have that lead back all their own way again. And Prentice goes all the way and it's blocked by Sylvester but it stays with Queensboro. I think NASA may have expended too much energy on that 13 nothing run just to get back in. They can never make it a single digit game. Boy that foul number four on DeGraff was very important too mm -hmm. and that put back that made it happen and the foul by Carroll. Give Carroll a big commendation for that play she made and now they're going to turn it over on the Queensboro side so here's Nassau with the ball but they're down by 20. It's number four on Hogan one more and she's done and Gonzalez is getting ready to go back in for Queensboro. Zapia to Cherry. Nassau needs some quick buckets down by 20 and that's not going to help Sylvester on the line. Couldn't stay in bounds right in front of that bench there. Yeah, they are a little tuckered out now because uh, it's not easy to come back from the type of deficit they were trying to work back from. And the timeout taken with 7.04 to go. Queensboro up 69-49. Gotta give credit to that young player, Carroll. You know, when Canoy's struggling a little bit or Prentice, Nice to have a Carroll that can step up and fill the void. First year out of Law Enforcement High School, a Queens, New York native. And uh, as we said, we could see a lot of good things ahead for her. And Kanoi with, Kanoi with 22 points. Uh, Carroll with 17 and Prentice with 15. A balanced attack. Be interesting to see where someone like Carroll ends up. Of course, we talked about Kanoi. She's going to go this year. and uh, be interesting to see where all of them end up. Yeah, it will. But, you know, Carroll, I think, has a chance maybe to play on a, even a Division II level if somebody uh, takes a little uh, flyer on her. Averaging 12 points and 12 rebounds per game. Got to like that. And as you pointed out in one of our er earlier games when you were talking about Ellerman on Suffolk, for every Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, there's a Tom McMillan, so it's more than just size. Sure is. A couple of York coaches in the crowd here tonight looking at these lady players because the Lady Cardinals need some help over there at York, and uh, 
I think they'd be like to get one of your players, David, even if it's not Kanoi, <laughs> you know, just somebody that can help that ball club. <laughs> Seven minutes to play. Queensboro up 69-49. Kanoi with the ball. Gives it to Prentice. Prentice being guarded by Cherry. And the long two is no good. Kanoi flies in for the rebound. Hands off to Carroll. Count it on the foul. That shot rolled around and went in and it's 71-49. As I said, I made trips around and uh, I heard some nice comments on this young lady. And uh, when you hear that, it's coming from people who watch uh, girls play, uh, ladies play in the high school level. And they have great connections that, with great programs and uh, they like the way this girl plays. And the graph is fouled out with 640 remaining. So Nassau down to six players. Cherry for three, it's good. 71-52, six and a half minutes to play. Now, uh, David, it's bombs away for Nassau. You hit some threes, try to get back in this ball game. You, you really don't have enough time to generate a comeback here. Nassau actually with three players in double digits tonight. Kanoi with the ball. And they got uh, some players in foul trouble too. That's been a problem. Kanoi inside. The shot's no good. Carroll tried to rebound, it couldn't. Here's Zappia. Zappia kick out another three pointer, and it's good. Out of look for the three. Cherry with back to back threes at 71 55. This team can shoot the ball. They have three or four girls who can shoot it, or ladies who can shoot it. Six nothing run for Nassau. The two three pointers by Cherry. Carroll puts it in off glass. Ow. Ow. Every time Nassau seems to make a run, there's Carroll with the big basket at 73-55. Little go and give right there, worked beautifully. And Sylvester with the three-pointer. They are spraying the air with threes now. I guess you might as well hoist them up at this point, that's three in a row for Nassau. Carroll inside, and Carroll again. 23 points. Up. And then it's taken away. Here's a two on one. Fidel to Prentice. Prentice threw up a wild shot and it's taken away by Sylvester. Game being played at a frenetic pace right now. 75 58, 445 to go. You gotta set up the three if you're Nassau. And there's a three second violation called on McFarlane. And Sylvester would have had a good look at a three had they not been called. Yeah, McFarland trying to stay too long in that area down there, hoping she would get a pass, maybe. Four and a half minutes to play. Kanoi called for carrying. Ball back to Nassau. <laughs> Queensboro four and a half minutes away from going to Suffolk County for the region semifinals. Another three-pointer, and that's good from Cherry. Yeah, I was just going to say, David, if you're Queens, you do not want to accelerate this game right now. You'd like to take a little time off the clock because three-pointers are going to hurt you, and that, that's about the only way that they're going to get back in this game. Well, since DeGraff fouled out, Nassau's on a 12-4 run. They've hit three-pointers, and there's a foul against Queensboro with exactly four minutes to play. Gonzalez pushing off off the ball. And that's number four on Gonzalez. And she'll go to the bench. They've had their periods where they've stuttered a little bit, Queensboro. But that three is really uh, a weapon now, isn't it? Cherry, long pass to Sylvester. Nice pass inside, Thompson couldn't score. McFarland puts it in off glass. And it's 75-63. So you stretch out the defense and they come out to play that three and then you slip a two in there and now, hey, they're back in the game. And you know, there's three minutes on the clock. You hit three threes, you're right back in the game. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go at 75-63. If this is the end of Nassau season, they're not going away without a fight. It's going to be difficult. There's no doubt about it, but boy, they 
have shot the ball at a blazing clip down the end here from three-point range. And without those mistakes, this game might be a little closer. They're on a 14-4 run over the last three minutes since the graph fouled out. Can't afford to take anything for granted on this level. No. And a 23-point lead was cut to 10 fairly quickly. And a 22-point lead has been cut to 12 in three minutes. We were just talking about a ball game that you're going to view at some time, which is a 2002 men's game. That's exactly what happens yeah. in that game. In the, in the space of five minutes, the thing just goes back and forth <laughs> three times, four times. Of course, it's early in the year. Right. The game you're referencing, a BMCC Queensboro game from right. 2002. This Queensboro game's taken place late in the year. I know Coach Chambers does not like to see this right now, but he's still got to get in there and address with his young ladies how to keep the 12 point lead with the 340 mark up there. And right now, obviously, DeGraff fouled out, but none of the other Nassau players are in foul trouble. And on Queensboro, you have Gonzalez and Hogan with four. And Kanoi has three. Now she has DeGraff on the bench because this is a defensive situation. And DeGraff has five fouls. And she's out of the ball game, <laughs> right. That might have something to do with it. Absolutely. Kanoi to the basket. Kanoi up and under and it's good off glass. Big basket by Kanoi at 77-63. 24 for Kanoi. So now they have to go to the three-point shot. And Sylvester will take said three-point shot, but traveling is called and the basket is waved off. Big call. Prentice had a three-pointer wave off in the first half for traveling. Wonder if Nassau would try to get fouls or something. Three minutes to go, down by 14. You could do it. Fidel to Kanoi. You don't have that many to work with in the one and one, but. Well, there's one given with 10 on the shot clock. Not that they wanted to. No, it's just that you can't allow Kanoi to get anywhere close to that basket and then Carroll to revolve in there. One more rebound and I think it's Dunsville. And that was the third foul on Sylvester. Nassau still had a few to give. That was only their fourth foul of the half, so Queensboro will inbound. And they have a new 30. As Fidel might try to throw it to Carroll right underneath. We'll see. It's Prentice. And Prentice throws up a tough shot. Maybe they should have run a little more clock there. Yeah, I don't, I don't think she should have taken that shot. Zappia. Cutting inside, and that's a tough shot, and it's no good. And Carroll with the rebound, hands it to Kanoi. Kanoi running a three on two. Nice pass to Prentice, and Prentice couldn't finish. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Cherry, bounce pass Thompson, couldn't finish, tipped. Kanoi has it. On pass to Prentice, and she'll slow it down. Here's Hogan. Hogan couldn't score. So two minutes to go. Nassau needs a miracle at 77-63. Cherry all the way and misses. And I think that might do it. Just about, I mean, I would have taken a few more threes in this situation, but. They were hitting their threes also. Yeah, really tough to come back from this type of lead. Speaking of threes, there's Kanoi, and that's missed. But it's last touch by Cherry. Queensboro will keep it. 135 remaining. And these girls have to be a little plain played out now. You know, I mean, they lost their biggest player, and it's been nothing but a struggle. Carroll puts it in off glass. 79-63. Well, Queensboro made it work down the final nine minutes. They had to make some plays, and they did. And there's another three-pointer. That's no good. Tried to save it in. Sylvester. Now the Jerry. question is, if they do play Sullivan, say, will they make enough big plays to stay in that game? And will they play smart enough, Dave? Will they do what they have to do to be in that game? I think they'll play smart enough as Cherry takes another three. It's a question if Sullivan is so good and they 
They came in here and just totally annihilated yeah. Greensboro. The question is, do, how do you play smart enough right. with a team like that? The question is, do you give Sullivan the wrong address or time yeah. to the game? You have to go to your strengths, obviously. You have to play like you played all year. You can't abandon that. So uh, you're, in a, you're in a tough situation. A, a good luck to them. They're, you know, getting to that game is a big deal for them. And Sullivan still has to beat Bronx, which they probably will. And that wrong address might work, too. <laughs> but you have to give them the address for the arena up there. <laughs> Kanoi is fouled by Sylvester. 44 and 8, 10 seconds to go. Number four on Sylvester. By the way, this Nassau team went to the national championships a couple of years ago, so that is a great thrill. They went to Minneapolis to play. Minnesota, Minneapolis. Face the number one team in the country in that tournament. Hung with them for a while. It's Prentice. Tried to put the exclamation point on the victory and then got her own rebound. Basically wind the clock all the way down. Carroll puts it in off glass. 81-65, Carroll with 27 points. As the crowd serenades Nassau with the goodbye chant. And Fidel deciding not to shoot. That's going to do it. Queensboro is going to be two wins away from the Nationals. Wow. After this 81-65 victory over Nassau. So Queensboro, a very, Nassau made them work for it in the second half, but a very impressive win, 81-65. They did what they had to do. They had a very tough uh, comeback uh, handed to them by Nassau, and they made plays they had to make. And um, they come out of the building with a, a nice win tonight. It was a... It was about a 16-point win. It wasn't any less. But uh, give Nassau credit, because at no point did they give up in this ball game. No, and a 23-point lead was cut to 10 at one point. Nassau really made them work for it. And this is our last game of the year broadcasting, and I'm wondering what you took away, what you thought of Queensboro this season. I thought they had a very successful season, and um, I know they're really going to be happy here when they're able to make that national championship around maybe uh, if they can do it. Uh, it. It's not easy though. In the CUNY championship this season, a win here tonight against Nassau, 81-65. Two wins away from going to Nationals. How do you size up their chances against Sullivan and maybe Suffolk if it gets to that? They're going to have to play very well, David. Obviously, it, it, it's not unthinkable but it's going to be a good uh, a good stretch for them. They're going to have to go and play their best basketball of the year. Interesting, Kenoy won uh, almost one CUNY player of the year again, and Prentice was all first team CUNY. I feel like Andija Carroll was one of the keys to this team down low. And she'll be another key next year, and uh, they'll bring in a couple of more girls to work with her, I'm sure, and it just keeps going on here at Queensboro. One thing they did do this year is they got the CUNY title back, which they had not had for a couple of seasons, and they have to be happy about that. Feels like it's back home for it the is, CUNY it title is back the home. There are a lot of banners up there now in terms of CUNY. So the program is getting stronger, it's getting better. Uh, the players are getting better. You like to see these young ladies go on, do something with this experience, and make an even better showing for themselves somewhere. I wanted to thank you uh, for coming in this year and announcing with me. Thank you. There are a lot of fun games this year. Thank you for going back with me, too, uh, when I go back into the archives there. <laughs> no problem. So, for thank Joe you. Massey, this is David Russell. Queensboro, two wins away from Nationals. They beat Nassau 81-65.